So here we are cutting out, or Duncan's cutting out the pockets for the beams to go in. We gave him a dust mask, but did he use it? No. He'll regret it one day. And here he is, he's raking out the oversight, ready to lay the weed barrier and vapour barrier. Basically this stops the moisture coming up through the ground to the underside of the beams. You've also got ventilation under here. We've got air bricks, which will keep it nice and dry. And that's important that you have a flow of air underneath these beams. The idea of beam and block is that you don't have to prepare the oversight. If you've got an oversight which is a bit spongy, made up ground, and you don't want to compact concrete into it, you can simply put these beams over the top of it and it doesn't matter what the ground does underneath. So it's a great thing in clay, great thing in made up ground. And I like it actually, I think it's a good system to use. It's quick, it's fairly cheap, quite honestly. These are about 40 quid each and then the blocks are about a pound each. So it doesn't work out that much. And uh, in this case, of course, we've got a cellar underneath, which is a bit of a bonus. And here we are, this is the time honored method that I've used for years for moving RSJs and concrete beams and all manner of heavy things. You can actually do it on your own, one man job, but Duncan's there, so we're going downhill. He's really just slowing it down, make sure we don't run away with ourselves. I'm a great believer in using as much in the way of mechanical aids as you can. Time for impressing people with my strength is long gone. So now we're putting the blocks into the beam. And this is just one of those jobs. You can't rush it, you just gotta do it. One thing you gotta do is clean the snots off the beam. Sometimes you get a few rough edges like that and you just need to clear them off. Sometimes I use a little brick hammer just to scrape through to make sure if they're a bit tight, sometimes they might not go in, but these are going in fairly easily, quite honestly. Could probably nudge that up a bit in a minute, but uh, it's okay because in the end, we're just gonna run a load of grout over these, which is basically sand and cement, wet slurry, and it fills in all those little gaps and tightens the floor up, no end, so it's great. And here we are, we're putting the blocks in the long beams. Now Duncan, he's basically sponsored by Calvin Klein underpants. He doesn't waste any opportunity to show the camera his underpants. Me, I'm sponsored by a sunglasses manufacturer. And a uh, little cheeky look at the camera, poke my tongue out. Now this is a shot I try to avoid. I think it's bad having builders bums facing the lens, but I wasn't operating the camera on this day. So what are you gonna do? Right, so that's it. That's the blocks laid in the beams almost, apart from that temporary soil stack that we've got there, which is just running under the floor for now. That won't be there for long. And this is the underside. Now here you can get a better idea of what the block and beam looks like. Now we've got all the blocks in place. We haven't actually grouted that up yet. So there's still water dripping through because the building's open. We didn't want to create a swimming pool upstairs in the brickwork. So we've left all that. But when the building's closed in, when we get the roof on, we'll actually just go over the whole of the block work with a very wet sand and cement slurry, brush that into all the cracks and that tightens the whole floor up, makes it act as one. So it'll be a really good job. And then when we've done that, we can get to work on this cellar. This cellar was a little bit of a bonus if you like. It wasn't on the original plan, but we added it and it really is a useful space. Apart from the fact we've got this sewer running through here. So we've had to build this block retaining wall here just to hold that ground back and give that sewer something to sit on. And if we hadn't got the sewer, we could have had a room all the way to the back here. So no use crying about it, but what a shame that we couldn't utilize all that space. Good news is we've got a lot of storage area here. So by the time we put a bit of concrete over there and make that look a bit nicer, we'll have a great area for storage and everybody needs room for storage. Very often in modern housing, that's the thing that they neglect. 
So that's it for the block and beam, and as you can see, we've come on a pace since then. We've got the block work above damp proof course level, so that's going to be in the next video. You can see all that, and if you're not a subscriber, if you become a subscriber, we keep you up to date. You don't have to worry about missing an episode. They'll all be there. We're going to cover it in lots of detail, and also other things, tool tests and things we've got coming up on Skill Builder. You'll be automatically informed of those videos. Now, I fully appreciate that not everything we do on Skill Builder is going to be for you. Pick and choose. We can't please all the people all the time, as somebody said. Who was that? Anyway, the sun is shining, so we're going to crack on with this job. And even though it's November, I reckon we can get a fair bit done before the real bad weather closes in.